Hey guys, it's Leopold the Brave, and welcome to the final episode of Fictional Fights. To those who didn't know this, um, don't worry, it's gonna be replaced by a much better versus show. But the reason it's ending is, it got to a point where I can't make the show as good as I want it to be, and it's relying too much on other people. And when you rely on someone else, and then that someone else can't exactly help you anymore, <laughs> then it kind of falls apart. But the next show will be done completely by me, and this one doesn't really have any animation or anything. It can't be as good as I want it to be, and I'm really, really sorry for that, but I need to show it to you anyways, because it took me two years to research this fight. I'm not gonna let a two-year-old die. <laughs> So you're gonna see a lot of, oh, get ready for season two stuff at the end. You're gonna see a whole lot of that, like, even the hosts come out and say, get ready for season two, guys. So just ignore all that stuff because it's not happening, sadly. But enjoy what this is for what it is. And Great Demon, have fun reacting to it because I know you are. <laughs> now let's start the episode. Wow. Can you believe we've been doing this for an entire year? We've had ghosts, super saiyans, and even a guy with no arms, legs, or neck. But now I think it's time we bring back one of the characters who started it all. Give a warm welcome to the first winner of Fictional Fights, Jin Kazama. Now listen closely. A character's previous record on Fictional Fights has no effect on the outcome. It's about the research like always. Yep. Winning does not guarantee another win, and losing does not guarantee another loss. It's all research like always. With that said, let's reveal Jin's new opponent, Sasuke Uchiha. Both have spiky black hair, family members they hate, girls they ignore, and curse marks. Well, Sasuke got rid of his, but you get the point. Viewers, pay close attention. Both of these characters are extremely detailed, so not everything can be said in the analysis due to time limits. But just know that every little thing was included in the research, even if we don't bring it up in the actual analysis. Just pay attention to that info bar over there on the left. It might tell you things that we don't have time to say. So which one of these two lightning warriors will win in a battle to the death? This is Fictional Fights! Now, you've already heard Jin's story, so we'll make it quick and try not to repeat last time. Basically what happened is he got devil gene powers from his dad, his mom vanished, and now his grandpa's trying to kill him. That's pretty much it. Jin actually had a pretty normal life until his devil gene of his started ruining everything. As such, he's dedicated his life to getting rid of it and his cursed bloodline. His attempts to do so include killing his family and even starting an entire world war. But since he can't seem to get rid of it yet, he might as well do the next best thing and learn to control it. Control over this power has helped increase Jin's already large arsenal of skills. Our improved research of Jin gives us more updates and details than last time on the show when he fought Ryu. He already knows three fighting styles, Mishima style, Kazuma style, and traditional style karate. That's a lot of karate! Winning most of the tournaments he has participated in, saying that Jin is a martial arts master is quite the understatement. Not many foes can deal with his powerful aura. The Mishima clan kinda has a thing for lightning. Jin and his family seem to have quite a strong resistance to lightning and fire. Jin can wield lightning in his hands and fight in places so hot that no normal human could even step foot there. Thanks to inheriting his mother's pure side, Jin has resistance to mind and soul manipulation, as he's able to suppress the Devil Gene's influence. Even Kazuya couldn't get past this resistance when he tried to rip Jin's half of the Devil Gene from his soul. And considering he was able to resist it while unconscious, and locked in chains made to neutralize his powers, this resistance is pretty strong. Aw, good thing he has mommy's DNA of light to balance out the darkness. Well, since the darkness has been brought up, it's about time we got to the powers of the devil gene. <laughs> of course the first thing I'm gonna bring up is the forehead laser! Huh, 
This Vic clone is sounding more like the original every day. Wait, what do you mean by clone? Oh, nothing. Anyways, the users of the Devil Gene are also granted teleportation and super fast flight. I mean, look at this. As soon as he exits the atmosphere, he reaches a low Earth orbit point in one second. Uh, how fast is that? Oh, somewhere around Mach 5.5 thousand. Holy smokes, it's a good thing he can breathe in space too. What else would that speed be useful for? Jin also has telekinesis, which can be used to choke victims out, or even destroy machinery. <laughs> if you think that's creepy, you should see how he can steal his opponent's energy and add it to his own power. The Devil Gene truly is a dark force that feeds on the fears of others. It also allows Jin to sense the location of souls from quite a far distance. There's just one more thing to complete his arsenal of cool powers, the Force Field. With this barrier, Jin is able to casually one-shot and tank attacks from Azazel, a planet-threatening monster from a higher plane of existence. He's also defeated Jinpachi who is possessed by a planet-threatening spirit. The entire world as we know it is on the brink of destruction thanks to the Devil Gene's power. Can be destroyed by a mere father son quarrel, and so be it. And I wouldn't doubt those words one bit. Jin has won many fights against Kazuya, a guy who could one shot country level robots. Even Gun Jack back in Tekken 3 has shown casual country level durability, and the Jack units have only improved since then. He's so powerful that his footsteps can shatter all the glass windows in a skyscraper, and his punches can create shockwaves. However, Jin isn't perfect. Holding back his power and not wanting to release it has ended up getting him a few losses on his record. Not to mention, even the thought of his mother can make him all moody and emo. He's lost a round with Lars and Huarong, but he's definitely tough enough to take the beating. Jin has survived falls from space, falls into explosion, and even an entire temple falling on top of him and burying him in the desert. He's powerful enough to take blows from a mountain-sized beast and then slice it in half along with an entire castle. This is most likely due to the Devil Gene having regenerative abilities. It's revived him before after getting gunned down. It's unknown how strong this regeneration is, but he did survive a close-up headshot, so either he has a really thick skull, or he can regenerate organs like his brain. Jin's stamina does have a limit though. Luckily, it seems to be fading away, while he was captured by the Tekken Force once. He later went on to infiltrate their bases and take out an even larger number of them, and three Hihachi clones. Even the ruins filled with monstrous beings like himself weren't enough to tire him out as he went on to obliterate the new and improved ogre. It sounds great and all, but Jin's Devil Gene does have one gigantic weakness. It can easily be restrained by pure and divine beings. In fact, his mother's pure blood is why he's even able to suppress and control the Devil Gene in the first place. I don't think he has to worry about that against Sasuke though. Speaking of Sasuke... Sasuke Uchiha is one of the last remaining members of the Uchiha clan. Why one of the last remaining? Well, to put it lightly, his brother Itachi invited the whole clan to a family reunion. And by reunion, we actually mean a terrifying killing spree. Yeah, Jin kinda had it easy compared to Sasuke. Ever since that tragic day, Sasuke has dedicated his life to improving his skills and becoming stronger by any means necessary to avenge the family he lost. Tons of training, cursed seals, and learning new abilities seem to be the perfect formula for getting him prepared. Did we mention that he's a ninja? Ninjas are so cool, <laughs> it's been my dream job. In the Naruto universe, these ninjas are filled to the brim with all kinds of special techniques called jutsu. The only price for the use of these is a little bit of chakra, the natural life energy that flows through all beings. So basically the Naruto vs version of Ki. Most ninjas even have their own chakra natures. Sasuke's main natures are lightning and fire. He later gained access to all of them, but these two are his natures of choice. With fire release jutsu, Sasuke can blow a giant fireball through his fingers, or even shoot a bunch of tiny ones. With lightning release jutsu, Sasuke can create a ball of lightning in his hand. This is called the Shidori. He can even channel lightning through weapons like his sword, or shoot a bunch of lightning needles. Aside from lightning and fire, Sasuke can also create shadow clones and shadow shurikens out of his chakra. Now you may notice something a little funny with his eyes. That's actually just his Sharingan. 
Sasuke gained this ability after witnessing the tragic loss of his parents. It allows him to see the energy flow of his opponents and even replicate the jutsu they use. There's even a better version of it called the Mangekyo Sharingan. Sasuke is able to perform genjutsu with these eyes. It's a special jutsu that plays with the mind of the victim. None of it may be real, but the illusions it can cause will definitely feel like it. However, the illusions can be interrupted in many ways, like the user's view being blocked for example. But wait, there's even more eye tricks Sasuke has. The next being the Renengan which grants even more abilities, teleportation and seeing invisible targets just to name a few. It doesn't consume chakra but it can still be overused to the point where it needs to recharge which can take a considerable amount of time. Not only that but he can't use the Mangekyo either while the Renengan recharges. But enough with the eyes, now let's talk about the big glowy guy. <laughs> How about it Kakashi? Can your borrowed shutting gun extinguish power like this? Oh, you mean Sasuke Susano, right? Yeah! The Susano is a giant humanoid suit made entirely out of chakra, and it also has a sword. On the subject of chakra, Sasuke Sharingan and Susano abilities require a large amount of chakra. This wouldn't be so bad if Sasuke wasn't so reliant on it. Running out of chakra can leave any shinobi helpless. Usually those who run out of chakra have to flee battle, and while Sasuke is skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat without it, many of his tactics are risky. He's a bit overconfident and relies on his own abilities rather than strategizing and planning ahead, making him vulnerable to surprises from his enemy, like in the fight against Killer B. Then I sting you like a killer bee! He's also a bit easy to manipulate emotionally, but this does sometimes work in Sasuke's favor. After being influenced by Orochimaru, Sasuke was able to take out Naruto in the one-tailed form. He then later killed Orochimaru himself, and since then, Sasuke has just remained about equal to Naruto's power. For an example of just how strong that is, Naruto was once able to block an attack capable of slicing the moon in half. He's durable enough to survive some powerful blows from Madara, and his Susano adds onto his durability. As for speed, Sasuke is able to keep up with Madara Uchiha who has traveled up to speeds of Mach 3.3000. He survived an explosion from Deidara that covered 10 kilometers by escaping at the last second inside of Manda. He was able to protect himself and others from the infinite Tsukiyomi, a genjutsu strong enough to trap the entire planet in an illusion. He even survived a fight with Naruto so fierce that he lost one of his arms. But luckily, Sakura was able to heal him. Jeez, how much chakra did he have to use to get his arm blown off? Quite a lot actually. While Sasuke's chakra is limited, it is by no means a strict limit. I guess that long all day battle with Naruto is a good example of that. Sasuke's certainly been through a lot of tough battles. You sure you still want to be a ninja? I thought you liked your arms. Of course, what kind of question is that? Teleportation? Chakra suits? Special eyeballs? Who needs arms? They're so overrated. <laughs> Alright then, let's get on to the highlight of this show's one year anniversary. It's time for a fictional fight. I will get my hands on that power. I'm going to surpass you, but I'll do it my way. I will. And that's a second victory for Jin. Go ninja, go ninja, go! Go ninja, go ninja! Oh, he lost. While it's true Sasuke is ahead in raw power, that's about all he has over Jin. That wouldn't be a problem if power was all that mattered. Sadly for Sasuke, it isn't. Someone with Shuriken might be taken down by a mere pebble if it's thrown by a master. Unfortunately, his most powerful attacks aren't as much help as usual once you consider Jin's properties. Jin and Sasuke both have fire and lightning manipulation. However, Jin is the only one with some level of resistance to it. Sasuke's Genjutsu wouldn't be of use thanks to Jin's resistance to soul and mind manipulation. And Jin's barrier would definitely help him defend against Sasuke Susano. Even without his barrier, Jin tanked attacks from Spirit Kyoto, a beast several times larger than the Susano. Not only that, but the beast was made up of earth spirits. Spirits? Divine beings? You know Jin's kryptonite? Yet he was still able to take attacks from it and slice it in half. Also, since the Susano is made entirely of chakra, there's nothing stopping Jin from absorbing it. And while Sasuke can absorb the energy as well, Jin is much less reliant on it than Sasuke. Jin only uses his key for lightning manipulation while the rest of his powers are supernatural based and don't require a limited and consumable energy source like chakra or chi. Plus, Sasuke's chakra still isn't enough to outlast Jin. 
Sure, Sasuke has been in long battles before, but that hardly compares to Jin powering through facilities and ruins full of robots and monsters. This includes three perfect clones of Heihachi, a guy so strong that Street Fighter's Akuma had trouble against even one. Now, let's talk about how large the speed difference is. While they both have massively hypersonic speed feats, Jin's feat has been calc to Mach 5.5 thousand, while Sasuke scales to Madara whose feat is calc to Mach 3.3 thousand. That's much too fast for Sasuke to focus long enough for things like the Amaterasu. There's only so much you can do against someone over a million miles per hour faster than you. Even if Sasuke managed to get a hit on someone that fast, Jin would soon heal it thanks to his regeneration before Sasuke would get a chance to land another hit. Landing hits on someone that much faster would be especially difficult for Sasuke considering his battle tactics. Sasuke going headfirst into battle and blindly trusting his own abilities is not good against someone who's a brilliant war tactician. Don't get us wrong, Sasuke is smart, but Jin's knowledge and strategic planning is useful against someone like Sasuke. His ninja tricks wouldn't be hard to figure out as Jin has faced ninjas before, and his soul detection could help him find Sasuke if he teleported. Oh, there's one more thing. It's your favorite part, Vic. The telekinesis trump card. Sasuke has no resistance to it, meaning Jin could have easily choked him out from the beginning. Sasuke is slightly ahead in power, but Jin's heavily ahead in everything else. Speed, stamina, attributes, abilities, intelligence, you name it. This fight was pretty shocking. <laughs> I'm making the lightning puns now. The winner is Jin Kazuma. Hey there, it's me Hira and my co-host Vic. We're gonna take a tiny break to get things prepared for season 2, since this first season was already a blast. It was a pretty bumpy ride too. We had some really good episodes like this one, but then we also had some stinkers. Next season things are sure to be a lot smoother. We'll try and clean up our format so it's less similar to some other versus show. We'll work much harder on research and understanding the characters so we don't end up with another Saitama vs Goku. And we'll definitely be working harder on the scripts so the reasons why a character wins aren't poorly explained like in Mario vs Sonic. And we'll try not to do any more drawings or narrations and stuff. We'll be sure to get more animators and animations. As long as they're not done by Leo. Good grief, he's terrible. Hmm. Maybe we'll do something about that annoying voice of yours, Vic. Editing a clone's voice chip shouldn't be too difficult. Alright, Hira, I want some explaining. Clone? Voice chip? What's going on? Oh, nothing much. Maybe I'll tell you next season. Speaking of next season, here are the fighters we'll be kicking it off when we return. My friends are my power!
And that's it. Don't worry, for my new show, I will be starting with Sora versus Dante, so you won't miss out on that matchup, because I'm already done researching that, too. I just gotta put it all together. So the new show will premiere with that fight, so I'm not trashing it. But I don't know when the new show will come out, because I have to create all new visuals for it, and all new template and layout, and all that kind of stuff, so... It'll take some time, but it will get done, don't worry. But I want to thank the animators I did have, Rampage Animations and Alex303, for helping me create this awesome show. And I want to thank Animation Rewind for giving it shoutouts, all the community members on the uh, Fictional Fights community, which is now the Leopold the Brave community because the show is trashed now. So, But yeah, that was it. I'm really going to miss the show. I mean, we did come up with two memorable hosts, am I right? But who knows, maybe this isn't the last we'll hear of Hera and Vic. But anyways, this is Leopold the Brave signing off. Fictional fights, goodbye.